this is designed to be a quick overview of Java for anyone who may not have experience with Java, but probably has a little bit of language experience, especially with something like C++. Now, Java was designed to be a write once, run anywhere language. And what that means is you could write it one time and it would run on a multitude of different types of computers. And while this is mostly true, you're going to find that there are always a few caveats to this. Now, because Java allows for such flexibility to be able to write on so many different platforms, Android was actually written on top of Java. Now, you can write apps for Android that are going to run on phones, TVs, watches, etc. However, because of the limitations of some of these devices, that means you're actually going to probably need to create slightly different applications to run on your limited reality. We're not going to worry about those at just this point. So what we want to look at is some plain old Java apps so that we can make sure we're up to speed on how to use Java. Now, luckily, Java is very similar to C++, JavaScript, and some other languages. So if you have experience with any of them, moving to Java should be simple. We're going to assume that you have a Java compiler, Java, already installed on your machine, as well as Java the runtime. You also need to make sure it's properly configured in your path files. Now, a couple of notes about Java syntax. Number one, it is case sensitive. It is strongly typed and is object oriented, so classes are needed for everything. Semicolons are at the end of each statement and braces are used to contain blocks of code. Now, let's take a look at some simple code. So here you can see in this class, we have a real simple Java application. In it, we have a definition of who can access the class. In this case, it's a public. And public is what was known as a modifier. Public means anyone can see it. We're going to see some other modifiers in a little bit. Now remember, because Java is object-oriented, your outermost block of code will be that class definition. In this case, refresher01. Our class name starts with a capital letter. This is standard Java notation. And our blocks of code, as we mentioned before, are going to be inside braces. We have a multi-line comment up at the top. Notice this is very familiar if you ever use C and their multi-line comments. We move down and we have our method, public, static, void, main. Public, once again, says who can access it, everyone in this case. Static is a keyword that is used as a modifier to make sure that we can access our main method without needing an instantiation of the class, i.e. we don't have to create an object first. So that's what static is for, and whenever we use and whenever we compile our code to run, a lot of times we're going to have a main, unless we're sitting on top of some other application. But for this basic type of console application, we're going to have that main function. <coughs> this main function has to be static, and so always remember that. If you can't get yours to run, you might not have that static. Finally, we pass in our strings, our args. So these are our arguments that we would pass in if necessary. We don't have anything in this case that we're going to pass in, but we always need to have that array of strings. That way, if we did pass something, Java knows how to handle it. In this case, we're working very simply. We're just going to use the system.out. System is a class that's defined that gives us helper information. Dot out is going to be to output information to our console window, and we're going to use the print line function to write our string. In this case, hello world. Now you'll also notice at the end of this line, after the semicolon, we have two forward slashes. This is a C++ style or a single line notation for comments. So hopefully that's very familiar to you as well if you've used C++, JavaScript, or any of those types of languages. Now to compile this, Assuming we have Java already installed on our machine, 
through Java, this Java compiler. And we're going to do our file name. So refresher 01.java. Java source files are going to have a .java extension. Hit the enter key. And it compiles. Now notice that it doesn't give you any output, any information that it ran, it did anything. If you get an error message, that means that there's a failure, some sort of syntax error. No news is good news in the, this case. Now to run our application, we're just going to type Java Refresher 01. When we did our compilation, it created a .class file. We don't have to specify the .class when we run. We hit the enter key, we see the print screen message come out, hello world and then we exit out. Very straightforward as far as how that goes. When we compile, we build something into what's called bytecode. That's something that the Java application can then go and run. Notice that the file name and the class name have to be the same. A couple other things you might want to take note of this stuff. Number one is Java is usually written in what's known as camel case or sometimes humpback notation. Generally this means that the first letter of each subsequent word is going to be capitalized. The first letter is going to depend upon what is it being used for. Class names will start with a capital letter. Objects, variables, and things like that will usually start with a lowercase letter. Blocks of code are going to be indented. This is going to make reading easier. It's not required for the compiler, but it makes it easier for other developers. Some people will use a tab. Others will use a series of spaces, usually about four. Strings are enclosed inside double quotes. Single quotes are only for a single character. So make sure you're using the right type of quote when you're writing your job application. Do these couple quick things and it'll be a whole lot easier and you'll be a lot less frustrated 